It's time for Baby and Toddler Instructions with host Blythe Lippman. Blythe is a nationally renowned infant and toddler expert who has over 30 years experience helping moms and dads regain their sanity, teaching them how to survive, and giving them the confidence they need to be the best parents ever. From sleeping, to crying, to potty training, to choosing a preschool, and so much more. If you're a parent, Baby and Toddler Instructions is the show you've been looking for. Now, here's your host, Life Lipman. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time zone you may be in. Welcome to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I'm so happy you could tune in this morning. I can't wait to talk with my guest. Her name is Isla Malik. She's a mom. She's an author of this book called The Pocket Mommy. I'll tell you what, if you have little ones, you have to get this book. It's it's terrific. But anyway, first, I have lots of things to cover. First of all, this morning, I was just watching Good Morning America. I was getting ready for the show, and I can't believe this. I don't know if you, had, if you were watching. They showed a 34-year-old nanny shaking. They, there were two children. I think she was shaking the child. She pulled her up with one arm and then she had this child on her lap the baby the child looked like she wasn't a little baby she looked like maybe two she must have been crying and she put her hand over this child's mouth i mean terrible you know what i've nannied many times sometimes you have a tough day but don't be a nanny if you're gonna do that this nanny's gonna go to jail i hope Total abuse. I mean, I've worked in many homes that have nanny cams, and I have to say, in this day and age, it's not such a bad idea. But if you check out my website and my book, I actually have a chapter on choosing a nanny, and I am very strong about what you should do when you interview them, what you ask. I have an article that I also will, will put on my best parent. Ca- excuse me, my best parenting I'm a little excited about watching this. Just so upset me. So if you're going to get a nanny, you know what? Check out my book, My Best uh, Baby and Toddler Instructions. I am all over the place today. Let's start over. If you're going to hire a nanny, you can get my books, Help My Baby Came Without Instructions, and Help My Toddler Came Without Instructions, or go to my website, mybestparentingadvice.com and babyinstructions.com. Phew, I better not watch that before the show. These things get me going. Also, I want to wish everybody some good weather and stay safe. We have two hurricanes coming, one on each side of the country, one in Hawaii and one at the Bahamas. You know, everybody stay safe. They had some terrible tornadoes in the Midwest this week. I have to say, in Arizona, uh, I love this time of year. I have my windows open, the tops down on the car, and I just love it. You know, we have these 100-degree summers for months, so it's our time to celebrate, but I do wish everybody stays safe and the sunshine comes out and stays out. So that was the first thing I wanted to cover. Also, October is Window Covering Safety Month, so check your window coverings if you have blinds and they have cords. Make sure they are very short and don't hang down. Make sure you don't put your baby's crib next to a window where the cord is on the side and they can pull it. It's very, very dangerous. Children have you know, gotten their hands stuck. They've wrapped these cords around their necks, unfortunately, and check all your window coverings. Also, they have little plastic pieces on the end, and you know they go right in the mouth. So that was window covering safety month in October, and there were no other recalls this week. Also, there were a couple really interesting articles in the New York Times this Sunday, and the first one I wanted to share with you was from the magazine. They have a, this week, magazine in the New York Times is all about children and food and what they eat in different countries. And it was the most interesting thing because, you know, we have children here that eat sugary cereals. You have children in other countries, in the Asian countries, that they eat rice and soup. I mean, it's very different all over the world. So this article in the magazine said parents who want their kids to accept more adventurous breakfast would be wise to choose such morning fare for themselves. Children begin to acquire a taste for pickled egg or fermented lentils early in the womb, even. even. It, it's interesting because it says the compounds from the foods a pregnant woman eats travels through the amniotic fluid to her baby. And after birth, I thought this was awesome. After birth, babies prefer the foods they were exposed to in utero. It's a phenomenon that scientists call prenatal flavor learning. 
So it says, even so, just because your children are primed to like something doesn't mean their first experience on their tongue will be pleasant. Because like Korean kids, they eat kimchi, cabbage leaves, and other fermented vegetables with chili peppers and garlic. And the child's first rite of passage, you know, we've seen many children on YouTube with with those faces or they're crying or they give them something sour. Also, I couldn't believe this. It says sugar is the notable exception as researchers call the early innate fear in utero, a 13 week old fetus will gulp amniotic fluid more quickly when it contains sugar. That's 13 weeks when mom's pregnant, 13 weeks. I thought that was really interesting. So take a look at the New York times magazine this past Sunday Really interesting with all the foods that children eat all over the world. And, you know, sometimes if they won't eat something, let it go. Come back to it in a few weeks. Just give your children healthy foods. Expose them to everything. Fruits, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. Halloween's coming up. You know what that means. I'll talk about that next week on my show because that's lots of candy. Also, the other thing I wanted to share was another article about is e-reading to your toddler story time or simply screen time. And this was a this was a huge article and it talked about the fact that if for years child development experts have advised parents to read to their children early, often citing studies showing that linguistic, verbal and social and social benefits. And they were really saying that the American Academy of Pediatrics advised doctors to remind parents to at every visit that they should read to their children from birth, pres from birth, prescribing books that enthousi as enthusiastically as vaccine and vegetables. And on the other hand, they recommend no screen time for children under two. Well, you know, we have great, we have great apps, we have great books, we have all kinds of things with on the on our iPads, on our phones, on our tablets, and you know it's easy to sit down with your child with the tablet and read a book. But they're saying it's not the sh it's just not the same. That there's there have seen delays in language development because sometimes the child is so busy wanting to touch the screen to turn the page, they're really not paying attention. They're really not looking at the colors or. Listening, you know, if you do voices, I love doing voices when I read to a child, especially if there's animals. It's so much fun. And it just says that, you know, there's nothing like a book. So once in a while, maybe, but choosing your own book and taking your child to the library is so much fun. There's nothing better. I can remember taking my kids to the library every week when they were old enough and we would bring the books home. We were allowed to take out five. That was many years ago. And each night my child would pick a book and we'd, and we'd read it. And by the end of the time that we took it back, they could read it to me, not knowing what the words were, but knowing them from the pictures. So anyway, that was pretty interesting. If you want to weigh in on that or anything else, you just want to say good morning. You can call us at 877-864-4869 or go to toginet, T-O-G-I-N-E-T dot com. And it says chat, put your name in, and you can talk to us on the chat line. Also, one more thing I did want to share before I introduce you to my guest was about an article that I had written called Say Goodbye, Please Don't Cry, Toddlers and Separation Anxiety. You know, that is a scary thing, and it's tough enough to go to work, getting everybody ready, getting out of the house, but then you get to preschool, and your child will not let go of your leg. So I wrote an article and I just wanted to share a couple tips from my article about separation anxiety because we are going to talk to my guest about a wonderful book called The Pocket Mommy. She's got a terrific solution. So if you take your child to school and they will not stop crying or let go of your leg, ask the teacher to help you. That's what they're there for. You know what? Let them go to go play with a friend or maybe if it's a boy, they like matchbox cars, give them a car, ask the teacher for help. They see this every single day and they know how to handle it. Also, don't make your goodbyes too long. One kiss, one hug, one goodbye. Don't hang around and see if they're going to stop crying. Also, um, you know, if your child is not themselves when you take them to preschool, make sure you tell the teacher maybe they didn't sleep well that night. You know, hopefully they're not coming down with a cold. Again, tell the teacher. Also, don't ever sneak out. Don't ever sneak out because it makes your child feel like it's not safe and they can't trust you. And it's scary to be there. Where's mommy? Here she is. 
you know, now she's not here anymore. Anyway, if you would like to see that article, go to mybestparentingadvice.com. Go to my name, and you can see all my blogs, and it's called Say Goodbye and Please Don't Cry. So before our break, I want to tell you about my guest that's going to be with us today. Her name is, is Isla Malik, and she is a working professional mom of three young children, and she created this innovative tool to help her young preschooler successfully master home-to-school transition. And this book is terrific. It's called The Pocket Mommy. Um, Isla is a Juris Doctor from Santa Clara University, a member of the California Bar, and she has dedicated her professional life to working with high-risk youth using the law and human empathy as a vehicle to build necessary life skills and teaching others to do the same. But her most important job is raising her little ones to leave the world a better place than it was when she arrived. And also, she had a great co-author, and her co-author was her seven-year-old. I think his name is Zion Malik Verma. I hope I'm saying it right. She will correct me if I'm not. And he recently finished first grade. He's an avid fisherman, pianist, athlete. And now that being an author has checked off his list, he hopes to become a police officer or a scientist when he grows up. Anyway, I can't wait to hear about her son. I want to introduce you to Isla Malik. And let's just say good morning because we're going to go for a break in about two minutes. But good morning. Thanks for being on the show this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Dwight. You know, I, I just love your book. And am I saying your name right? Yes, Isla Malik. That's exactly right. And my, my the co-author is Zayon Verma. Zayon like crayon. Okay, Zayon. This book, you know what, this book is adorable. And this is one time that I wish we did have video radio because I would love to hold the book up. But if you go to my website, babyinstructions.com, or if you go, I think the article's on the front page, you will see the book, how cute it is. Um with the pocket mommy in the pocket, and we'll tell you more about what the pocket mommy is when we come back from the break. But I I do a video every week to advertise the show and all my wonderful guests. And the first part of my video this week is a is the book, and it is in front of me. So if you want to see how great this book looks, it's terrific. So when we come back, we are going to talk all about the pocket mommy. And what do you do when your child's having a hard time leaving you, whether they're going to school, you're going out. So we will be right back. We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Have you ever wondered if you're normal or why you feel distant from your partner? Then join us for Sex Talk with Lou with your host, Lou Paget on Toginet, Wednesday nights, 9, 8 central. Do you want to recreate a truly connected relationship or wonder, how do I tell my kids about things? Join Lou Paget, one of the world's best-selling authors in the field of sexuality, a certified sex educator and sought-after expert for all media and her renowned expert guests as they discuss anything and everything about sex that impacts our lives and our families' lives. For more on Lou, check out her website, loupaget.com. This is the show where the best experts in the field of sexuality and sexual health can finally give you the answer to that question. Join us for Sex Talk with Lou with your host, Lou Paget, Wednesday nights at 9, 8 central on toginet.com. It's time to uncover the inspired team leader within you. Overcome the challenges of hidden agendas and miscommunications that create stress and a lack of productivity. Project management expert Norm Prevost and connection expert Heather Hansen O'Neill will provide you with a consistent infusion of inspiration and team strategies. In addition, your hosts will invite knowledgeable leaders to inject different viewpoints, situations, and solutions for an all-encompassing perspective on achieving winning team performance. Spend one hour each Friday transforming your mindset and increasing your skills. The Inspired Team Leader Show, your path to innovative ideas and action items you can implement today. 
to create a more productive team and feel amazing in your role. The Inspired Team Leader Show, heard every Friday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time on ABRN, the All Business Radio Network. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Bly Flipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. Thanks so much for tuning in. I am so excited about my guest today. Her name is Isla Malik, and she and her seven-year-old son, Zayn Verma, wrote this terrific book that I can so identify with. It was really funny because when my son was in preschool, he would cry every day. I we didn't. I'm not going to say I'm ancient, but we didn't have cell phones in the car, and I used to take him to preschool. He would scream bloody murder. I would be so nervous that I would go find a payphone and I would call his teacher, Mrs. Saltz, and I would say, "Is Andrew okay?" And she'd say, "Yeah, he's fine." So it got to the point where I would take him to school and I'd go, "Okay, Andrew, showtime," because it was for me. He wasn't really scared. It was just part of being a toddler. You know what? That's part of all part of toddlerhood, anyway. So, um, Isla, tell my listeners, how, how did you decide to write this book? I see, you know, before that, tell my listeners also, you were, let's see, I was looking, you grew up in two households. How was that? Did that influence any of this, your books, your, your, uh, profession? That's a great question um, that no one's asked yet. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. So I was grown up, my, um, I, my parents were separated and then divorced when I was, you know, an infant. So I didn't know, um, you know, what what growing up in two households as opposed to one was that that was really any different. Um, and I was very loved in both, so I think that was that was fine. But I, you know, it's funny that you should say that because I think I need to do more introspection because <laughs> I've been drawn a lot to separation. For um, I'm now really working and looking at. Um, incarcerated people and their separations from their families. And so this, this kind of theme of how hard it is, um, for people to separate is something of, of great interest to me. And perhaps it started off in my own childhood. And I, I haven't really, um, delved down into that. <laughs> it's a great you know, question. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny because we don't know. And it's, and I'm a lot older than you. And I look back and think, wait a minute. I know where that came from, even though it was, mm-hmm. you know, years ago. Yeah, no, I think I think that's right. I think after this, um, you know, this this call this week, I should really kind of do some introspection and, and uh, figure out if that's where it's linked. I, you know, my my conscious memory um, of going back and forth was that I had a, a very set up, you know, room with all of my things in each place, and my conscious memory is that it was, you know, really exciting to have two spaces. Um, but I think there's, you know, I think there's definitely. I know that when I was in school, however, um, my drop-offs were really challenging. And I remember some of them, and I'm also told by my parents that, I mean, I was sobbing. And so, you know, a lot of times when my kids were, I have three kids, and as they've kind of all been through the preschool phase, um, my my parents kind of laugh and say, well, you know, (laughs) it's in the genes. Um, And so it it could be that that was something of what was going on for me was about the separation between two homes. That's very true. That's that's interesting. It'll you know I don't have grandchildren yet, but when I do, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Because right. anyway, that thank you for sharing that. So, pocket mommy, how did you decide to do this? And with your son, I love the illustrations. They're so cute. Well, thank you. So the illustrations are actually done by my friend, um, who is also a father of three, who lives in Austin, Texas. Um, and he and I, uh, we were, went to college. We were in this, you know, lived together in Santa Barbara with a, with a bunch of people. And, um, and so when I, my son and I, what had happened was, um, he had a really difficult time in preschool. Um, as you were describing, um, how Andrew was with you, that was very, you know, similarly my experience with Zayon. And it was just, 
awful. And I remember, you know, driving to work and just being miserable because I, you know, you, you, you almost have to like gear up and battle up for this crazy drop off. And I, I remember thinking there's gotta be, there's gotta be a better way. And so what we started doing was creating little totems. Um, I love how you just said it in the introduction that, you know, maybe a matchbox car or something like that. So we created a little totem and it was called the pocket mommy. And I, I said to him, this is going to be pocket mommy. And it's going to be in your pocket. And, and, you know, it was a cut at one time, but it was also a lot of, like, little, I don't know, like a little eraser or something, a little object that he would put in his pocket and he would essentially use as a totem when he missed me. And for me, what was really great was I started seeing um, and being able to talk to about, you know, I was able to see his experience as I would debrief when Pocket Mommy came out or, you know, when he had to call upon her. And he would tell me that it was a lot of times, you know, he'd give me specific things that they were doing. And most of the time it was during transitions from one activity to the next or it was right before nap time. And so a lot of what we worked with the teachers on was how to sort of bolster those periods for him and keep him active. And, you know, that, that was something that really worked. And he, he it took some several, several weeks, if not almost feels probably two or three months. And, and he was good. Um, and then three or four years, so about three years later, my daughter came along. Um, uh, and when I was on maternity leave, um, with her, uh, my, you know, we, my son and I said, you know, we should put this to paper. And so I, the way we did it was I kind of sat at the computer and he told me all of the things that happened during the day are his, his creations of playing pirates and, and all of those things. Um, and when we kind of thought we had a little book project, we called my friend, um, Vinny and, um, Vince illustrated the whole thing. And Zayon actually was very integral in the illustration. So he would kind of critique, um, Vince's sketches and say, you know, well, the seatbelt should go the other way. Or, you know, I think the first illustration of uh, a playground scene had like a fake sword as a pirate sword. And Zan goes, oh, gosh, we're not allowed to bring weapons to school. So he just constantly <laughs> critiqued the um, critiqued the illustrations. And then we put it together and um, and got it published. So, what about the dog? Yeah. Is this your dog? The dog. Oh, the dog. The dog is actually, so Vince has a dog. He has two, actually. And um, and then Zayon has one that conveniently lives with his grandparents. It's his dog, quote, unquote, <laughs> <laughs> that it stays somewhere else. So the dog was just kind of an extra um, meaningful piece for both of us. Hey, that's a great tip for parents out there. Get a dog for your child and let grandma and grandpa keep them. Perfect. That's right. <laughs> You have to get up enough with your babies when they're born and your kids that don't sleep and just to have to let the dog out. <laughs> that's that's exactly right. So Zayon will say, he'll say, you know, um, yeah, I have a dog, but, you know, he stays with my grandma and grandpa. <laughs> so we're very happy about that. That's nice, too. Everybody should have a dog, you know, after your kids <laughs> grow up. Um, it's it's funny because you're – one of my tips that I tell parents with the separation anxiety before pocket, I knew about pocket mommy. I love this. I'm going to share it with everybody because it's brilliant. But I would tell moms to give, give their child a kiss in each hand and have them hold it. And when they get sad, they know they have mommy's kisses in their hand. Oh, I love kiss. that. I love that. It's beautiful. So, you know, you can do that, too, until you all go out and get Pocket Mommy, because this book is great. On the back, you can cut out the Pocket Mommy, and you have one, you know, you have all different looking Pocket Mommies, but there's also one that you can draw your own. And it just, you know, it's, I think it's so ingenious, because I... Well, and I think, I think that's the fun part, because, you know, as you, as you said, you know, you don't, you don't need a, a, a paper cutout. I mean, anyone can do this concept with anything, and yet the kids have had, um... A lot of my little readers, at this, I didn't get to do this the same way with Zayon, but they've had a lot of fun decorating their own um, mommy likenesses or daddy likenesses. And, and, um, and, and if, even if they don't carry that actual paper cut out, the, the, what they're doing is engaging in the process of understanding that here's what's coming and mommy's always with me and this is just, you know, mommy's in my heart. And they're, they're doing it as they're coloring or as they're doing an activity. And that's, I think, for me, the most important part is how do you, you know, with that age, how do you just keep on introducing them without making them feel anxious um, and, and make it fun and start dialogue or a conversation so you can monitor how their anxiety changes? You know, I think 
every preschool should have this. I'm not kidding. I think the teachers at the <laughs> beginning of the year, you should be doing a workshop for the teachers at the beginning of the year and sharing pocket mommy because it's tough. I mean, I've worked in preschools many, many times as well as I've been a nanny and the, you know, it's separation anxiety is normal for a lot of children. Not everyone has it, but it's very normal. And when the thing I can remember is, is running a, a preschool room and there wasn't one child that was crying. One would right. come in and the next three would come in and they'd all be crying. And, you know, some of them didn't even know why they were crying. Yeah. And as the mm -hmm. teacher too, you know, it's, it's tough. They know what to do. You know, you actually have to have to pick another activity. It's time for redirection if you can do it. And mm -hmm. I think it makes it easier on the moms, too, because the other thing that I found is that when you're a mom, you know, you want to hang around. You want to peek in the window. You want to make sure your child's mm -hmm. okay. And and to have this tool is just terrific. Start doing preschools. Come to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> we have actually what was really great with my so – my, son likes to go, we like to do some readings, and we created a really huge, you know, kind of the, the huge teacher version of the Pocket Mommy, I mean, this huge, huge book, and we do these classroom readings where he reads some, and I read some, and then we do a little kind of create your own Pocket Mommy, so um, yeah, well, next time we're in Arizona, we'll definitely come near your, your neck of the woods. <laughs> well, you know, it's, and it's interesting with the book, because how many times do you ask your little one, what did you do at school today? And I know as the kids get older, I don't know how, is, is he your oldest? Is he seven? Yeah, so he's now, now he's actually eight. So he's in third grade. And then I have a five-year-old and I have a just turned three-year-old. Wow, you're very busy. Oh, yes. <laughs> but, you, but it's interesting. What I was going to say is because you get them to engage and tell you what they did. As they get older, especially teenagers, you go, what did you do today? And they go, nothing. And you go, okay, right. well, what kind of nothing did you do? And, you know, that it's tougher to get out of them what they did at school. And you want to know because they're gone all day. So the descriptions, I love hearing what they did at school and the lunch and the lunch boxes and what was in it and their friends. I mean, this is just such a great idea. Um, we're going to have a, another break in just a minute. But I want to talk a little more about separation anxiety when we come back because, you know, anything that can help the parents. And also, I want I want my listeners to know that it is normal. Don't ever, as a parent, beat yourself up. If you take oh, your yeah. child to, to preschool or have a babysitter or whatever, don't think that you're doing something wrong as a parent. It just, you know what? It's like peekaboo. You play peekaboo with your baby, and then as they get older, they think you're not going to come back. They don't realize. So <laughs> peekaboo, you do come back on that. No, we are going to have a commercial break. We will be right back. We'll be right back with more help. For help, my baby came without instructions. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Familia, faith, identity, tradición. Latina life is never boring, but it can be muy dramática. So how do you coexist between the old school ways of la abuela and the new school life you're creating for yourself without losing your faith, familia, identity, or tradiciones? Welcome to Living Latina with Francesca Escoto, where culture curls and curves collide in one spicy cross-cultural conversation that will leave you begging for mas. Francesca tackles all the important issues, from politics to family values, to religion to, you guessed it, relationships and men. As Chief Everything Officer at the Wow Factor, Francesca is passionate about showing women of all cultures, ages, and lifestyles how to rock what they've got with style, sass, and smarts. Be sure to join her every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for Living Latina, only on the WooHoo Radio Network. I am not the woman I used to be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet. 
This is your chance, ladies, to hear stories of hope and healing from someone who's been there. Someone who has fought back from the horrors of incest. Minister Diane's innocence was stolen from her in the land of alcoholism and mental illness, which led to her being emotionally, physically, and sexually abused by her parents. Yet in spite of this trauma, she has gone on to become a successful wife, mother, registered nurse, and minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not the woman I used to be. I'm Free is a straight-up show to enlighten you and to lighten your load. Do not let the weight of this world or the things that have happened to you control your life. For more on the show and Diane and her book, The Story of Me, email her directly from her show page here on Toginet. Then, join us for I'm Not the Woman I Used to Be, I'm Free, with Minister Diane Jones, Monday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I am here with my wonderful guest, Isla Malik, who wrote a terrific book with her son called The Pocket Mommy, and it's about separation anxiety. If you have a question for her or you want to call and say good morning, if you're listening live, if you're listening to a podcast, you can't call us, obviously. But if you want to talk to us, call 877-864-4869. Or go to the chat line at toginet.com. I love callers. Anyway, we're talking all about her book, The Pocket Mommy. And, you know, during the break, um, Isla and I were talking about separation anxiety. And if it's a good idea to even talk about it, if your children don't have an issue with it. So what do you think? So for me, and I think for a lot of my colleagues, um, part of what, so, so there's some kids, you know, we all are, the moms of us who have kids that put on shows, we are so jealous and envious of the moms and dads who just walk their kid in and the kid just goes by <laughs> and, um, and goes and plays. And I think, and my daughter actually was like that. She was fiercely independent and had no issue and, you know, you know, was just of a different sort of cloth. And, um, and I, and I think though, even with her, it was really great for her. She was so excited about school and had no issue with separation, but to remember and remind her that we're in each other's hearts. Um, and also, um, for her to know what the school day was going to look like, she really loved it. She kind of came to other things, um, in that book. So, um, there's pictures of how he makes friends and how, um, you know, what, how there's boys and girls and how they do music. And so she was very drawn to like, what's the classroom going to look like and feel like in more of an excited way. Um, and so I think any, you know, we all read books to kids that, um, whether they're having an issue or not, prepping them for, you know, what school's going to be like or, you know, graduation's going to be like. And I, I think this is just another one of those experiences. Well, you know, I'm looking on the back of your book because you have great questions to get the kids to talk about their day. And it's funny because... All the preschools that I've worked in, you know, we have our setup. We, you know, teachers always have a plan, not that it ever works, especially depending on the age of the child. And you come in and you, you know, go to your different places to play or color, whatever it is, to the different centers. And then there's snack and then there's circle time and then there's outside time and then there's an art project. And a lot goes on. And especially if your child just goes to preschool in the morning, sometimes there's so much that's going on that. You can't get them to talk about it, and they're tired, and sometimes the kids are grumpy. Well, this is a great way to get your child to talk. And and with Pocket Mommy, again, Pocket Mommy, explain exactly what Pocket Mommy is. Why is it Pocket Mommy? Okay, so Pocket Mommy is, um, in this case, it's a cutout that the little boy, Zayon, um, is carrying with him, but it can be anything. And Pocket Mommy is um, a little idea of mommy that's in your pocket that goes to school with you and when you're feeling uncomfortable or nervous or you're missing mommy you can pull out pocket mommy to either see what you're doing um, or you could just put your hand in your pocket and and feel you know feel the pocket mommy there and feel comfortable or more secure and um and like like the book does over time that you the the child comes to his own realization that he doesn't need pocket mommy because pocket mommy's always in his heart. Mommy's always in his heart, and he knows that mommy's always there, and mommy will come back. Um, so that's the sort of the sort of gist. Pocket mommy is simply like a like a like a totem. 
you know, something that makes them feel comfortable. And it's not big. I mean, it will fit in a pocket. The thing, when I looked at this, what I thought was if I ever did this for my child, I would probably take a picture of me, a yeah. picture of my face, and maybe glue the face on the one that you have yeah. that, that doesn't have a face on it already. But, yep, and well, and the, my um, my daughter, who you know, like I said, fiercely independent, she actually cut out a picture. My my mother in law is a school teacher, and you know, you take the they have the the yearly pictures, right? The school picture package, mm-hmm. and she got a small picture of my of my mother in law, and she said, "I want a pocket Grammy," and she just cut out pocket Grammy. She just cut out Grammy's face kind of, um, some of her shoulders, and she, we didn't even glue it on cardboard or a popsicle stick or anything. We just, just the picture, and she called it Pocket Grammy, and Pocket Grammy actually slept underneath her pillow <laughs> for a week, and, uh, and then, you know, we find Pocket Grammy, Pocket Grammy is sometimes found in various places now, but, um, but you can do it with anything. My, my three-year-old, who just transitioned into preschool, um, when he, just, but uh, before he was three, um, you know, I tried reading Pocket Mommy with him, and he was not that interested at all. Uh, it was too long for him, which that's fine. And so we just kind of looked at pictures. And then I sort of helped him with the cutout, and he was, not again, not that interested. For him, for whatever reason, his Pocket Mommy, as we all joked, became his lunchbox. And so he would not put down his lunchbox, and that was his thing that would kind of ground him and make him feel the minute his hand left my hand, he would hold on to his lunchbox. Um, and he did that for about a week and a half, I would say. And then, um, and then he would see, put the lunchbox back where it needed to go. Um, and every single time we have a, a saying that is, you know, whenever I would drop him off, he'd look at me and I said, okay, remember mommy. And he, and then he, they finished the sentence always comes back or I'll say daddy or, you know, on or whoever, whoever is in their lives, you know, and, the, and then they'll finish it always comes back. Um, and just to build that security for them that this is just, here's what's going to happen. We're going to come after nap time. We're going to cut, you know, um, I think was a huge win. You know, I love that because that's what they're afraid of. You know, you, they're afraid you're not coming back. And like I was talking about the peekaboo, you know, the yeah. game with the baby, the peekaboo. When it starts, it's really fun, and you make the babies laugh, and they smile. But then as they get older, they don't, you know, it's so funny because they don't realize that you can't see them. Right. They think, I mean, they, they have their hands on their eyes, and they think that they're disappeared. But then as they get older, they're, they some of the babies I see get scared because they realize that mommy or daddy may not be there because they don't get the concept of it. I mean, I know this has nothing to do with pocket mommy, but it just reminded me of that because, again— yeah. You know, it's the separation anxiety, and it's and it's knowing that they will come back. Um, also, with with babysitters, let's talk a minute about if you leave your child with a babysitter, not a nanny per se, but if you know if you have date night, which all parents mm-hmm. should have date night, and I hope you have that. Everybody <laughs> needs a date night, no matter how busy you are, and you have a a sitter come to the house. You know what? Pocket mommy would work great with this too. Even Absolutely. though it's in your own house. Yeah. So we actually had um, one of my my um, reader friends uh, use this with a babysitter. And what they did was they actually had pocket mommy. Um, <laughs> kind of creepy for the babysitter, poor babysitter. But they had pocket mommy stay on the fireplace mantle so that the, the – so it's kind of like, hey, not only is Pocket Mommy here, but she's going to watch everything that's going on. And the, the parent used it kind of like a sh- elf on the shelf kind of mm-hmm. um, concept where you better behave because Pocket Mommy's watching, but also know that Pocket Mommy's here. And um, and so I'm here and I'm watching. And I know what's going on. So it's kind of a, a different purpose, which I loved, um, but also made the child comfortable because it's something that they know and it's something that the mommy – and the, the, in this case – the real value was that the mommy and the kid made the the, the pocket parent together, um, and so they were talking about, hey, here's what's going to happen, and here's what's going to happen when you're with, um, her name was Lisa, when you're with Lisa, um, you know, you're going to eat your dinner, and then you're going to bathe, and so she kind of explained it as she was creating the art project, um, and then pocket mommy sat there, and, and I, we keep saying pocket mommy, but it could be pocket parent, pocket anybody, um, it's it's just to do with anybody that the kid feels safe with. And you know what? That's so smart to do. I mean, I was talking, I don't know if you were online at the beginning of the show. I was talking about this nanny that, you know, is going to go to jail. I was all hepped up this, because they showed this nanny that shook a baby, put her hand yeah. over the child's mouth, 
And maybe Pocket Mommy standing on the fireplace, maybe she would have thought twice about it. Well, <laughs> I think we need more than that. We need to insert some kind of camera in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God, no, the awful. nanny cam. You know, that's again, awful. and I think if you're, I just want to, want to put this in there if you are going to have a babysitter for your children you know what try them out when you're home have them do a it's called a working interview have them come over go in another room and you know i know it's like you're still there and they're going to be on their best behavior but again it's always good to on the other side of the coin to have your children used to who is going to watch them when mommy and daddy aren't home because i've had parents have a new babysitter and they're in a hurry and they have to leave and they you know the babysitter's fine she's great loves the kids but the children have never seen her before for maybe 5 seconds and that's when pocket mommy needs to come in so again well and and by the I think that's too where excuse me, I think that's too where where if let's say it doesn't come in, let's say it's rushed and we don't you know, we I you know, we didn't get a chance to really spend as much time as we would want to, that could be depending on the age, that could be an activity that um the babysitter does with the kids. So let's draw what your mom and dad look like and let's let's give them a name and what should they be doing and, and kind of almost um triangulate the parents in a positive way and use that as a way to connect with the young person so i think it has a lot of different applications oh i think so too also with your with your sitters when they come in ask them what activities they're going to do with the kids if you have older children you know if they're not little babies that need bottles if they're toddlers you know what are you going to do because a lot of sitters sometimes just sit i can remember right. years ago maybe different today but a lot of also you have many babysitters that bring a bag with them with crayons with coloring with games with whatever because right. you want them to interact with your children while they're there even though they're they're there to keep them safe you want them to do something with the kids and then they look forward to it and and you call hopefully only once and say what's going on and and then your child will tell you when you come home what happened with the sitter and how much fun it was. I always loved to bake with the kids when I was a babysitter many, many years ago. I always loved making cookies, and then they had, you know, it was fun. It was a great activity, and then Mom and Dad were so excited. So anyway, we're yeah. going to have another break, and when we come back, we will continue to talk about separation anxiety and the pocket mommy and how you can make, how you can help your children feel safe wherever they are. Because I talked about this month that it is the, it's the month for the um, window covering safety month. There's so many things you have to think of all the time about keeping your children safe, and this is just another great thing to, to have your kids feel safe and wonderful and loved. So when we come back, we'll talk to Isla once again. We'll be right back. The tunes will be coming. We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's baby and toddler instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Information about book publishing is power. The power to change your authoring life and the power to change the lives of your readers. So join us for Your Guide to Book Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific. You'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now. As the book shepherd, Dr. Judith Bryles is in. And each week, she will include publishing professionals that will reveal tips and secrets to the author's journey. If there is a book in you, you want to listen, learn, and yes, call in with your questions each week. For more on Judith and what she can do for you, check out her website, thebookshepherd.com. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. 
Martha Sanchez, the host of the Mobby to Mogul radio show, empowering women to build a successful business, invites you to join her on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At the ripe age of five, she was already interpreting information in documents and instructions on forms for her immigrant parents. Now, through her experience and those of her guests, she provides you with valuable steps to empower you to reach financial independence. Martha A. Sanchez is a registered nurse with a bachelor in nursing and master's of business administration. She's a business coach, speaker, author, and CEO of Moss International, LLC. Her diverse work experience brings you expertise in areas essential to customer service, social media, and budgeting. The Mommy to Mogul radio show furthers her personal mission of empowering women to help them build successful businesses so they can reach financial independence. Join Martha Sanchez, the host of the Mommy to Mogul radio show, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back. I cannot believe we're up to the last part of the show. This goes so quickly. I'm here with my wonderful guest, Isla Malik, and she and her son, the co-author of Pocket Mommy. Her son, Zion Burma, helped her write the book and is now eight years old. And what a thing to have under his belt at eight years old. So exciting. Maybe he'll be an author in between being a policeman and a scientist. You never know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's exactly right. Although now we've set the bar. So now Kenza, my daughter wants a book um, and wants to do, she wants to illustrate one though. So I think we'll have to do something a little bit different. We've got a lot of, all of them want their own little projects now. So we've set the bar. <laughs> You're a great mom. You're such a great mom because, you know, I love seeing the creativity. My son's an actor and he's different than my daughter who's in corporate America. And it's wonderful to see what their strengths are, what they lean yep. towards and how things change so much. That's so true, and how how different, I mean, truly different each personality is. I mean, gosh, yeah, that's yeah, that's great. Well, you're a great mom, too. I can hear all about getting so many tips myself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So you have three tips you can share with my listeners that are included in your book. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of them, I think, and I think we've talked about some of them, but I think a couple of them. I think one is um, to use, one tip I would say is, um, to use uh, whatever you use, whether it's a paper pocket mommy or a totem pocket mommy or whatever, use the um, a scale of one to five. And again, it depends on the age, and and you can do different things as they get older. But um, even with my high sort of high school high risk youth that I work in the professional side, I always use scales. And so, for example, if a young person tells me I'm not feeling well, my tummy's hurting, um, putting it on a, okay, zero means that, um, or even drawing pictures that they don't know the numbers, but, you know, X means, zero means that it's just really, really painful and I want to go get to the doctor right now. And a five means that, um, you know, it's great or whatever the scale is. It doesn't even matter. And to use the point is, is to use that relative scale each time you talk about the same issue. It sh- helps show progression. And so with Pocket Mommy, um, where that scale comes in is sort of how many times, you know, did Pocket Mommy come out to visit you today and when did you need her? And you'll start to see, like, does that become less? Does that become more? And you can start to gauge anxiety. So with older kids and, um, high, you know, high schoolers and beyond, um, you know, we, we use skills all the time. I'm not feeling well today. Okay, zero means you're feeling really depressed, and five means you're feeling great. Where are you today? And if the kid says three, you know, the number is less important as then when tomorrow I ask, hey, I know you weren't feeling well yesterday. Where are you on that scale now? And if the kid says, oh, I'm a four, well, that means that they're feeling a little bit better, and it's the incremental progression that I think as parents, caregivers, and educators that we want to pay attention to. So that's the first tip. What um, about, I think that, uh-huh. can I interrupt you for a second? What about Please. if if they're little babies? You know, you can't always tell, not little babies, but maybe they're one. Maybe they're, a, you know, uh-huh. a new toddler. And you can't ask them, you know, how do you feel? Yeah, you're, do, you're totally right. You so know, you can have, see. Uh, yeah, you'll have to just watch and look at a scale, right? And maybe you make, so I think there's, I mean, for, for, um, 
a lot of times when they're infants and not talking or a little bit older, we start to create almost like what's the scale based upon whatever you're using, fever, formula, their sleep pattern. You can start to make a scale and a progression. But I'm, but I'm reminded of my, um, my nephew who just turned two. He's, um, you know, he's, I'm thinking of him when he was kind of really in the stages of one, one and a half. Um, and, a lot of what you can do at that age is still kind of say, um, it is not do a scale, but look at what makes them, ha- how quickly do they get out of something? So let me, let me give you an example. So if somebody's having a bad mood or someone's upset, um, and how quickly you can distract, distract them into some a different activity or into being happy is a version of the scale. So if it takes you longer to distract the young, the, the kid, or if it takes you, um, if they're not easily distracted, those are signals that you're not progressing or that things could be worse. And if you use that over time, it, there are mile markers to say, okay, how bad is, is the, is the child feeling, um, or, or, or how much is this just sort of cosmetic? And I think, you know, I think it's harder when they're nonverbal, definitely. Um, but I think that the point is, how do you create some sort of mile marker for yourself so that you know whether things are getting worse or better? That's a great tip. And remember, for brand new moms, you will get to understand your baby's cries and your baby's actions mm-hmm. as they get older. Because I know I've heard so many moms say, but I don't know why they're crying. And that's all normal the first couple months. You know, that's as great. they get older, you will know exactly what your child wants. Guaranteed. That's exactly right. Okay, so I'm sorry, I interrupted the three tips. No, tip no. number two. <laughs> okay, tip number two is um, I, very akin to um, your tip or earlier on, which is um, to, to, to pr- so I would uh, two things. One, not make long goodbyes. I love how you said that, and that's really about a discipline issue with parents <laughs> as much as it is um, with the kid grabbing on. But I would say that if um, I would say to practice. So if, for example, um, your child is about to transition from a home to school transition, how can you, you know, weeks before, months before, talk about it, lead up to it, and then practice where either you know, in, in my situation, um, for my daughter, maybe this is one of the reasons she didn't cry. The school let us, um, kind of drop her off for just an hour here or there, um, so that she could get a sense for what that was like. And so how do you start to, um, build that into your transition? If you're the first time that you're using an outside family babysitter, or it's the first time that a kid is, um, I don't know, now I'm dealing with sleepovers, first time for a sleepover, (laughs) you know. um, And so how do you sort of build the conversation but also build a practice point? So um, when my my son was saying he wanted to do a sleepover with one of his friends, and I said, well, that sounds great, but let's practice having a sleepover first and a – you know, grandma, at the different grandma, grandpa's house, um, or let's practice doing, you know, having your friend over here first and seeing, and so kind of building in practice points where you can then talk about what worked and what didn't work and what might the next transition look like, I think can be really helpful. That's a really good tip. And, you know, I think also to, to say more about that, if you're going to be having a child sleep over at your house, ask the parents if they've ever practiced and if they've ever tried. Yeah. Cause I can remember myself as a kid. This is it's funny. I remember calling my mother, having them call my mom in the middle of the night. I don't want to sleep over anymore. It wasn't fun. It wasn't my bed. And nobody was there that I knew except my one friend, I guess. So, you know, no yeah. one to expect to because that, those first sleepovers, if they've never done it, kids don't always understand. Yeah, and that, I, mean, I think we all remember, I remember that story, too, where, like, everything was fine up until the time we were actually sleeping, and then I wanted to go back home. I know. And then, you know, Dad, the parents you get called bed. at, like, 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think the third part is to just be really consistent with um, some messaging. So if it's, you know, for us um, – you know, for us, we do, we have a lot of different little rituals. And so for us, like I said, I shared the one where we'll say a person, daddy, then the kids finish always comes back. Um, or we, even though they were, you know, this is, we used to say that before my son even knew that there was a separation kind of a thing. Um, when I was still on maternity leave, we just always would say things like that and they kind of start to internalize, um, messages. We do other little rituals or messages where, um, every, uh, Every time at dinner, 
we do kind of what are what are three things that happened today or highlights from the day. And, you know, we started that more with my older son, and now the three-year-old, the two, since he was two, he'd say, I want to tell you about my day, and he'll he start – he starts in, in, you know, using the same language and the same ritual. And so I think it's about like, what, what is it that, what messaging consistently do you all say? And, um, you know, the other one that comes from the book is that we are always in each other's hearts. And that's a very abstract kind of high level concept. But if you just say it enough, then it comes out in other ways too, you know, like, you know, well, I missed you today. Um, but we were in each other's hearts. And I think, um, I don't know if I'm on tip two or three, so I'm just going to roll into this one, which is that I think sharing with your child that you miss them too um, <clears throat> and you keeping a picture and you talking about, even if the child didn't miss you, but, you know, I really missed you today. And I actually had to look at your picture a couple of times at work. And But then I remember that you're always in my heart, and I, I was getting excited that I could come home and see you pretty soon. And, you know, having those kinds of conversations and modeling it for the for the child I think is really great. And you know what? That's a great tip. You could have a pocket child. You know yeah. what? You could make a pocket child with your child. They make the mommy. You make the child. But what wonderful tips. You know, we were up to the end of the show. I can't believe it's going so going so quick. I'd love to have you back on again, especially when you write your next book with your son <laughs> or, or your daughter. Anyway, so where? tell my listeners where they can find you and where they can get this wonderful book. Great. Well, it's, it's in any bookstore, and if they don't have it, they'll special order it um, or on Amazon. And it's Pocket Mommy um, is the title, and you'll see, like um, Blythe was saying, a little boy with a pocket sticking out. There is The Pocket Mommy, which is a little bit different, um, but it's Pocket Mommy. And then you can also go to our website, pocketmommy.org, um, and there's some information there. And then, of course, we're on Facebook and Blythe's blog and everything else. So, well, yeah, I will that's put- a bless to you. I will put all that on my website as well, mybestparentingadvice.com and babyinstructions.com. And go visit the website. There's a great post about gifts. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Blythe, for having thank me. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. What, Bye-bye. Wow, what fun. I love it. Just love, love keeping little ones safe by having pocket mommy. Next week's guest is also going to be a mom and an author. Her name is Lucy Adams, and she has a book called Put Your Skirt in Your Panties and Run, and she is hilarious. You have to have a sense of humor when you're a parent. Absolute must. I mean, things happen all the time. If you laugh, it makes it better. Also, follow. make sure you check out my websites again, and I'm on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I try to post every day, and I have my favorite tips on mybestparentingadvice.com and babyinstructions.com. And if you need a little coaching, a little help that's non-medical with your babies or toddlers, I've been doing this for 35 years. I love it. Call my office at 480-510-1453. And schedule an appointment. I do phone. I do video. And if you're in Arizona, if you live near me, I'll even come to your home. So the office is 480-510-1453. And I'd like to leave you today with these words of wisdom. A mom says to her toddler as she's driving him to school, I really have to get to work today so there'll be no crying when I drop you off. Okay, honey? And the toddler says, okay, mom, I know you can do it. And as J.M. Barry, the author of Peter Pan, wrote, never say goodbye because goodbye means going away and going away means forgetting. And as my grandmother used to say, never say goodbye, say so long. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week. So long and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.